Thomas the Tank Engine goes gender balanced and multicultural. Remember Thomas the Tank Engine? It was the show about a steam engine called Thomas and his friends at the railway station. There was the fat controller who always wore a top hat and a morning suit and his many train friends. Thomas has since become a legend. It was a show that children in the UK and US have watched for generations. The episodes don't get old. The lessons learned in the show are still relevant today and Thomas the Tank Engine is still a classic character that children recognize. That's why the news that Thomas the Tank Engine is going multicultural and gender balance worried me. The best way to change the direction of a country is to indoctrinate its youth, get into the schools and infiltrate popular culture. You'll create a whole generation of politically indoctrinated servants, many of whom will become violent activists who shout down what's left of the right, and others who will simply get on with their lives quietly voting for far-left candidates. The Independent reported on the news about the classic kids TV show explaining, After years of accusations of sexism, racism, and classism, Thomas the Tank Engine has now been updated for 2018. The children's show, based on the books by Rev. Wilbert Audrey, has been revamped and a brand new series launches next week featuring multicultural characters and female protagonists. The new female characters include Isla, an Australian flying doctor, Hong Mei, a number one blue tank engine from China, and Churubala, a female railway controller from India. So accusations of racism in Thomas the Tank Engine. Really, I had never heard of that, but it appears to be true. A couple of years ago, when the Great Race movie was released, the franchise was attacked for being racist. I mean, work that one out. The movie saw trains coming from all over the world to race, but the left weren't happy about it. They said there weren't enough black characters. Really? I mean, I didn't know there were black trains. I didn't even know that Thomas should be black. Isn't he blue? There were also allegedly claims that black smoke being emitted by some of the trains was some kind of racism as opposed to representing their dirty inner workings. What's next? Their level of madness is insane. Writing in The Guardian, Tracy Van Skyle said, I'd like to think there was a good environmental message in there, but when the good engines pump out white smoke and the bad engines pump out black smoke and they are all pumping out smoke, it's not hard to make the leap into the race territory. I mean, these people are mentally deranged. This could be written by a parody columnist, but it is real. She also complains that the girl trains use pink, which is sexist, and that there aren't enough female trains anyway. And there have been multiple cases of the show being accused of hidden racism and imperialism. Writing for Slate, Jessica Roack said that Thomas the Tank Engine espouses top-down leadership, is male-dominated, and punishes dissent. So now they've finally got their way. They've pushed the show so much that it's now becoming gender balanced. I wonder if the fat controller will make the cut next time. I mean, isn't that body shaming? After 73 years, the show is being relaunched and will feature trains from all over the world. There's an Australian flying doctor, a tank engine from China, and even a female Indian railway controller. How inspiring. Here's the thing, and bringing in trains from all other countries isn't bad. It's been done before and really, who cares? There's nothing wrong with teaching children about the world. But there's also no reason to fundamentally transform the format and nature of a show just to prove to children that the rest of the world exists. Children will spend most of their life in this country, in their own country, and experience their own culture. There's nothing wrong with that culture being represented more on a show than, say, Indian culture. Of course, the argument by the left is that the West is more multicultural than ever, so children should learn about it. And that's true, but it doesn't mean it should be true. This decision is a result of decades of indoctrination and globalist policies that have slowly stripped away the West's identity. The final nail in the coffin is telling Western kids they don't have a culture to identify with. And that starts with school and cartoons. 
If you want to see more from me and the rest of the Rebel team, like and subscribe.